The topic that I want to talk about is the angle of twist in the gear assemblies. Consider this case. There are two shafts connected together. Consider you want to determine how much is the twist at the right end, at D. To determine that, if I look at this structure from side, I would see these two elements where the torque is applied at D, and the total <coughs> twist will be a function of twist in each of these two elements. So I need to determine twist in element number one and element number two. Twist in element number one is TL over GJ, okay? Similar to that, twist in the second element will be TL over GJ. How much would be the total twist at the end? In this case, point D is connected to point A by these two elements, so I need to add them together. So phi at D is phi 1 plus phi 2, okay? Now let me consider another case. In this case, again, we have two elements. The restraint is at the left, and at the right is subjected to a torque. So everything is similar to that, but these two elements are now connected by gears. We want to see how we can determine <coughs> angle of twist at D. So let's take a look at that from side. We would see these two elements, gear B and gear C, are, are shown here. And we are looking for phi D. In this case, similar to what we had done before, we need to determine phi 1 and phi 2. So phi 1 is TL over GJ, phi 2 is TL over GJ. But the question is how we can determine twist at the right end. Can I say phi at D is equal to phi 1 plus phi 2? This is not true anymore. Why? Because the angle of twist in the right element transferred to the bottom element through gears. So I need to take care of that. So this equation is not correct. To understand that, let me start from the very left end. <clears throat> How much would be the angle of twist at A? It's zero, it's fixed. How much is the angle of twist at B? That would be equal to twist of element number one. So twist at B will be equal to twist in the shaft number one. Is that correct? Okay. How much would be the twist in gear C? These are two connected gears. Use rule number three and use the gear ratio to determine how much is that. In that case, phi at C is equal to negative gear ratio times phi at B because these two are connected together. Right? Now, let's move all the way to the right. How much would be twist at D? Twist at that point is equal to the initial twist, which is phi at C, plus the twist in that shaft, which is phi 2. Okay? Now let me put all these equations together, and we will get this one. Phi at D is equal to phi 2 minus gear ratio times phi 1. So this is how we can determine twist in a gear assemblies. Now compare this equation with this one. So it is not phi 1 plus phi 2. I have to take care of the gear ratio, which changes the twist when we move from one gear to another gear. Does that make sense? I want to quickly solve a problem. A motor shown supplies 4 kilowatt at 2 hertz. Shaft 1 and 2 are each solid 30 millimeter diameter steel. Uh, the length of first shaft is 850. The length of the second shaft is 1160 millimeter. The bearing permits free rotation, as we expect to see in all uh, torsional problems. Determine the rotation angle of gear D with respect to flange A. Okay, so. We want to determine how much is the total twist at the right end. Similar to what we discussed, we need to determine torque in each element first. Then we need to determine how much twist in each element. First, let me write down what we have. Power is 4 kilowatt, which is equal to 4,000 watt. Angular velocity is 2 hertz, which is equal to uh, 2 times 2 pi, which is 4 pi or 12.57 radian per second. The diameter of the first shaft is equal to the diameter of the second shaft is 30 millimeter, and J1 will be equal to J2, that would be pi over 32 diameter to the fourth, 
and that is 79,520 millimeter to the fourth. So now we can determine how much is torque in shaft one. How much that would be? Torque is power divided by angular velocity. All right, let me plug the values here. With the appropriate unit, the torque in shaft one will be 318.2. Okay, how much would be the torque in the gear at B? Same. How much would be the torque at gear at C? I have to use the gear ratio, okay? So the torque increases or decreases? When we are moving from smaller gear at B to larger gear at A, the torque increases. So the gear ratio that I have to use in this equation is 54 divided by 36, and that gives me negative 477.3 newton meter. That is torque at C. How much would be torque at D? For shaft 2, that would be the same. I'm moving along a shaft. All right, we have determined torque in these two shafts, shaft 1 and shaft 2. All right, let me write it down here. In the second step, I'm going to determine how much is twist in each of these two shafts. Twist in shaft number 1 is TL over GJ. We have everything that we want, we just plug it back into this equation. So torque 1 is 318.2, that is near than meter, I have to convert that into millimeter by multiplying that by 1000. Length of that shaft is 850 millimeter, G is 80,000 megapascal, and J is the one that we have obtained. That gives us 0 0.04252 radian. That is the twist in the first shaft. Similar to that, we can determine how much is twist in the second shaft. Let's do the calculation here. Torque is 477.3 with the negative sign. Length is 1160. G is the same, and J is the same. So that gives us negative 0 0.08703 radian. Now we need to use the trick that we have learned. How much is the total twist at D? We have learned that twist at D is equal to phi 2 minus gear ratio times phi 1. Okay? We have these two values. Let's plug it into this equation. The negative sign cancels with the negative sign on the back of the gear ratio. And that would be 0.1154 radian. That is the